God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for bringing us in this place another Sunday, God. Thank you for restoring us, Lord. Thank you for the vision that you have given us, God, as a church, Lord. God, as this word goes forth, Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit dwells in this place, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray that whatever is taught on today, Lord, that it resonates in our spirit, God, where we not only keep it for ourselves, Lord, but we go out and we spread the word, God, and we continue to make disciples, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, as the old folks you say, I, I won't be before you long. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the message I want to be speaking on is called Build on the Rock. And as we know that Jesus is our foundation, if you don't know that, you know today that Jesus is our foundation. Amen. Amen. We can't do anything without God. No matter how hard we try, no matter how many different messages are spewed out into this world, we cannot sustain ourselves without God. So most of us know that for something to last, there must be a foundation or a standard set in place. Yeah. Without such, whatever one tries to build will remain in a temporal state and become hard to sustain. This is something we not only learn on our jobs, but in relationships as well. There must be a standard and foundation set in place for it to last. Mm -hmm. When our walk with Christ began, we quickly learned that even Jesus had a standard. In the beginning, it may have seemed like it was just a list of rules when really Jesus was just setting the tone for us to have a foundation. A firm foundation that shows us if we consider ourselves followers or disciples of Christ, our life must reflect that in some way. That's right. So the scripture I will be coming from, our main focus scripture is Matthew uh, chapter 7, 24 through 29. Mm -hmm. And before we get to that scripture, we're going to do a little backstory, okay? So, for most of us who know who read the gospel, when we, read, when we get to Matthew 5, when we get to Matthew 5, this is when Jesus begins his sermon on the mount, right? And so, within the sermon, Jesus is talking about multiple topics and multiple subjects. Not only what we must be mindful about, you know, the prophets, um, the disciples, fruit bearers, Jesus also mentions what we need to be doing and being. Fasting, praying, being salt and light, and doing what is pleasing to God. So during his teachings, all Jesus really did was expound what had already been taught in the Old Testament, right? Because we know the book of Matthew is basically a bridge, okay? So, um, so during that time, the, the religious leaders of that day were better known as the Pharisees, right? So these individuals, they were great at keeping the laws, right? They 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 knew how to teach it. They 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 expected the people to follow it. And I mean to the T. But as we know, like it was so many laws, it's like who can really follow all of that? <laughs> so what the Pharisees did not truly abide by the laws themselves because while they taught the laws their hearts, their hearts were not rooted in God, but rooted in control. They were self-righteous and performed acts to appear as if they had a strong relationship with God. But those acts were put on display so they themselves could be recognized and not for God to be glorified. So when Jesus came to teach, he taught the message in a way the people could stop examining themselves based on their outer works. And to break that down just a little bit, sometimes when we do things on the outside, we think that that's all God requires of us, like that's enough. But really, God is checking for our heart posture, too. Man, man. Because one thing I will say, because I've been in the industry for a long time, only particularly for a little bit, but what I will say, it's easy to stand up here, preach, it's easy to stand up here and sing and everything. But when your heart is far away from God, mm -hmm. when you leave in front of the presence of other people, Right? When nobody's watching you, well, yeah, when nobody's watching you, when nobody's clapping for you and everything, mm. life can start living contrary to what God has already spoken. Say it, say okay? it, say it. So, and, and so what Jesus wants us to do is start viewing things from a spiritual aspect, right? 
And like we said, you know, viewing it from our hearts. As Jesus mentioned, if you read um, earlier in the text when Jesus started his uh, Sermon on the Mount, one of the scriptures, one of the things that Jesus said is like, he did not come to, he did not come to change the law, like he did not come to get rid of it, he came to fulfill it. So what that simply means is, like he, but he, he did not want to change what had already been spoken. But what he wanted to do was basically take it a step further, where he started examining our hearts, where when the Bible tells us, thou shalt not kill, most of us view that as, hey, I, as long as I don't do physical harm to somebody, that's just fine, right? But Jesus took it a step further, he was like, even if you have anger against your brother or your sister, you're just guilty, right? And even when we look in the book of Genesis, right? And we see before Cain committed the sin towards his brother, when he did physical harm to his brother, it started in his heart first. So we have to check our hearts. Amen. 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 So, so after Jesus mentions all these wonderful things in the sermon, now we're going to turn to Matthew 7, 20, 24 through 20. Therefore, no, I will. Did everyone there say amen? amen? Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and, the, and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it has its foundation on the rock. And the beautiful thing about this scripture is like, it's not dismissing that something is going to come. No, something is going to come. But when it's built on the foundation, which is Christ, it's able to hold. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. So as we said earlier, the Pharisees, they were great at, hey, this is what we need to be doing, this is how we need to be living, and blah, 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 right? Which we already know, nobody wants to do that because it's easy to say these things, but the person behind the teaching them, are they also living? That's even why when we're in leadership positions, it's very important that as we're teaching, as we're singing, as we're preaching, whatever we're called to do, our life must not be contrary to what has been spoken in God's word. Because we have people who are watching us. We are the examples. Some people, they even see our gifts before they even see Christ. That makes sense. So whatever God has placed in you, Make sure you use it, but use it where it's honoring God and you're not trying to honor yourself. Amen. Amen. So, as we mentioned, the difference between Jesus and the Pharisees was Jesus' lifestyle matched what he taught. He not only knew the word, he also lived the word. The word was with him, and the word was him, which is John 1 and 1. So I know you're wondering, like, and how did this apply to me? So, when we take a glance at all the messages that have been spoken over the past week. We've been um, talking about the tabernacle, right? We should all just come to one conclusion, which is we need God. And trying to sustain our life without him is foolish. When our life is not built on Christ, our foundation is not steady. And everything that could possibly destroy us will. Why? Because what has been spoken, what Jesus has been speaking on, we're not applying. When adversity arises, we're trying to pull our way out, but continue sinking and struggle to hang on because we have allowed everything in and forgot about the rock, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening, we start building our life on this temple of treasure. Like we see it all the time and everything, where it's like we start chasing money, fame, whatever the case may be. 
And then we're wondering why some of these things just do not last or why we do not have this everlasting joy or we do not have peace. Even though we have all these things, right? It's not something that can sustain us. So, we begin turning our attention to people, places, and things to give us a temporary fulfillment. The issue that falls underneath this kind of thinking is now we're relying on our thoughts and understandings and not leaning towards God. God already tells us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 7, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You say sometime. You say sometime. Am I going to know if I'm not the only person Anyway, it say, it say maybe a little bit. It says with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in some of your ways. Oh. I just want to make sure we all read scripture. Anyway, but in all your ways, submit to him and he will direct your path. Yes, yes. I know submit makes people mad. That's a very important word. <laughs> and he will direct your path. Not us directing our path, but we already know. We touch something, we don't have all the facts, we don't have all the information, but if we bring bring our prayers, if we bring every situation to God, he's the one that's going to give us an understanding of what you need. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Mm -hmm. God knows us and the words that have been spoken is not made for us to feel restricted or we cannot enjoy life. Because I know most people, especially if you're a young believer um, or a beginner, you may hear some of these things and you're just like, man, it just seems like I can't do nothing. Like, what you mean I can't? <laughs> I can't, you know, just live my life. But it's like, no. Jesus is not saying that you can't live your life. He's not saying that at all. He wants you to live your life. But it definitely has to be built on something. And not anything, not something that's temporary either. God knows this world is evil and he loves us so much he gave us his word which is our foundation so when adversity comes we can withstand the storm stop thinking you can live your life without God there are issues happening in our world that if your life is not built on Christ you're not going to make it we see every single day mental health is failing we see every single day what's being important to our children What's being important to different types of households? What's being important to schools? But we have to set the example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they will know, so their response to adversity is, no, I need, I need to be able to feed Jesus. Amen. Jesus does not Amen. want performers. Well, come on. Amen. He wants people who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Amen. That's Matthew 5 and 6. Holy, yet their hearts are rooted in idolatry and self-righteous behavior. This is why when God begins expanding your territory, you must remain in prayer and at the feet of Jesus because if you're not careful, you will begin taking on the glory and honor for yourself and start forgetting about God. Jesus wants to have a relationship with his people. So yeah, it's not just a whole bunch of rules. He wants, he desires to have a relationship with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus wants to have a relationship with his people. And through his teachings, we see he wants it to be genuine. Jesus' teachings show us we have some work to do. Yeah, the time to start building that foundation again is now. Yeah, so man. if you fell off a little bit, you got an opportunity today. Amen. Amen. We have an opportunity today. Ain't no excuse. <laughs> There's no excuse. There are be situations in our life where we feel like, oh my gosh. But if you build that foundation, uh -huh. right. Jesus is teaching show us that we have work to do. Time to start building a foundation again. Now. No more remaining complacent in the areas. God is calling us to infiltrate. Right. 
No more running scared and hiding because what we have been called to be and what we have been called to do has always been bigger than us. Yeah. 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 Has always been bigger than us and it should not be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned earlier, some people they see our gifts before they see before before they even get to know Jesus. So it's important to know that this walk is not it's, it's not about us, really. We're, it's not about us. Amen. So when we go out into these places, our first mission should always be how is this going to glorify God? That's right. Amen. How are we going to start building that foundation even within our households? Amen. Amen. And I need to say, I pray as we go out. Go on with our week. We remember who our foundation is. We've been building a true relationship with Jesus. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.